Hello everyone, today I'll be having a look at another floor washer. This is by Danish manufacturer Nilfisk, but it's not made in Denmark, it's designed in Denmark, but of course, like many things, made in China. This is the Nilfisk Combi washer, and it's a very similar sort of design to the Bissell Crosswave. It has a separate tank for clean and dirty water and a rotating roller with brushes to help dislodge the dirt on the floor and of course a squeegee to suck up all the soiled solution. Currently I've been using a Tinco Breeze cordless floor washer which I've been very happy with but unfortunately it got knocked over yesterday and broke and I can't fix it. So I had this ready to demonstrate, so I thought, well, what better time to open this up and start using it. I think it's going to have a bit more power than a cordless machine, but in my demonstration, we'll find out if it really is any better. So without any further ado, I'm just going to take it out of the box. There'll be a slight bit of assembly to complete, and then we can have a look at this Nilfisk in action. This is the Nilfisk Combi floor washer and as you can see the handle needs assembly before we can use the machine. It's fitted with a long 8 meter mains cable. You get this cleaning slash storage tray similar to the trays you get with most cordless or mains powered floor washers of this type. So you store the machine on this tray but you can also clean the rollers using the tray as well. It comes with a tiny, tiny bottle of combi washer detergent. Now you can buy a bigger bottle from Amazon or the best place I found is cleanstore.co.uk where you can buy two different types of floor washer. They do one for universal floors, lino and tiles, and they do one for wood floor. And you can also buy replacement accessory kits including the brush rollers for the machine. Also, we get a variety of instruction books in different languages, mainly pictorial instructions, but I'll be taking you through the video on how to use this machine, how to set it up, how to assemble it, everything. But you get the instructions, of course, with the machine. So first thing to do is assemble the handle. At the top of the machine here, you'll see that the screw has already been inserted. So we have to remove that first before we can fit the handle. You should be able to do it by hand. And then at the handle, you'll notice that there is a cable that goes up to the switch. So when we put the handle into the main body of the cleaner, we don't want to trap the cable. Just sort of make sure it's not going to get in the way. And then gently insert the handle into the top of the machine. Don't force it. If you can't push it down, you might have to reposition the cable. This is a little bit awkward, I have to say this. There's quite a surplus amount of cable inside. Now that might do it. As I said, you don't want to, there we go, it's fitted. You don't want to trap the cable because you'll have problems later on. When the handle is flush with the rest of the cleaner, you can pop the screw back in. Is it going to go in? <laughs> there we go. You might have to jiggle it about a bit. And then using a flathead screwdriver or a coin, we just need to tighten that. Just not, don't over tighten it, just tighten it enough. At the back of the handle, you'll find the cord storage hooks that lay flush when you're using the machine. So to use the cord hooks, you just need to pull them out like so and loosely wrap the cable around. They're quite close together so hopefully the 8 meter cable will fit. It's a quite a thin cable but it's a good length 8 meters so you should be able to clean even the largest kitchen or whatever hard floor area. Obviously we don't always just have hard floors in the kitchen. We can have hard floors in all the living areas. At the end of the plug, obviously we need to remove these uh, protectors that go on the plug, the pins of the plug. Yeah, it is a little tight to be honest. All this cable with such uh, short hooks. You'll find also on the end of the plug, there's a little clip. And if we can position it correctly, you can clip to another part of the cable 
which will be stiff. Now the cable's coming off. I hate, <laughs> I hate these things. Put automatic cord rewind on them, folks. That's what I say. Then, of course, that would increase the weight and the cost. That, there, right. <laughs> it's sort of gone on. It was pretty stiff to start with. It is brand new. We do have a useful carry handle located at the back because you need to carry the machine upstairs if you want to do your, your bathroom floors, your en-suites, whatever. So that's a nice sturdy handle. I like that. I like the positioning of that. It makes the machine easy to lift. This switch on the back of the handle controls the solution. So you just squeeze it to start the solution flowing. You can also lock it in the on position using this little blue lever. So you just push that up and now the nil fisk will constantly put solution onto the floor, but also it's sucking it up at the same time. Here at the front of the handle, you'll find the on off switch. To recline the handle for use, you just put your foot on either side of the cleaning head and pivot the handle backwards. And you'll see that it does have a swivel action to enable you to get round obstacles, chairs and furniture, etc. in your room. And it does lock securely in place when you're carrying the cleaner or storing it upright. Or when you're pausing your machine, it will stand on its own. But when you're storing it, it is best to store it in the special storage tray. When you first take the Nilfis Combi out of the box, there are various plastic bags you need to remove, plus some yellow tape that we have to remove before first use. And it just says here, remove before use. Pretty straightforward. There's one here that holds the clean water tank in place. In fact, there's two, one either side. So take those off. And also there's one on the floor head here. Before we can remove this yellow tape, we need to take off the front nozzle, which you can do by pressing on this silver button and just removing the nozzle like that. So that's handy because you will need to clean this from time to time. You can just rinse this under running water. And then we have access to the brush roll, but clearly we need to remove this. And here is the brush roll, very soft sort of microfiber tight brush roll here but it's also got brushes built in and they are quite stiff they're a little bit stiffer than the Bissell Crosswave but you can also take this out obviously for cleaning there's a button at the side here that releases it so that will come out from time to time and you can give it a thorough wash as I said you can buy spares of these from cleanstore.co.uk that's the best place I found the spares for this machine but you might be able to get them on Amazon but you can clean the brush roll on a regular basis with the cleaner in its storage tray and I'll show you that in the course of the video. Nilfisk also supply this little handy tool for cleaning the brush it's got a blade in it so if you get any hairs or anything caught around the brush you can actually go along like this and remove any debris you can use this machine without vacuuming first, but if you've got large debris on the floor, I would always vacuum first before using the washer, but it's up to you. You can use it without having to sweep the floor. Also got a suction inlet here. So this is a stage where you can check for any blockages, but it's unusual that this should block up, especially if you do sweep the floor first. To relocate the brush roll, I have to locate it this side first and then it'll just slot in hopefully there we go that's straightforward enough and then to insert the nozzle there are two holes here and two lugs on the front of the nozzle so you just locate the lugs in the holes first push it back and click it into position at the front of the cleaner, you'll find a dirty water tank that can be removed by pressing this silver button here. So press it and pull the tank out. It is a bit stiff because it's new. And then you can see the clear part of the tank where all the dirty water is collected. So to empty it, you just have to remove the filter and float assembly just by pulling up. And then you can tip out the dirty water down your drain, sink or loo. This is the float valve. It's important to keep this clean, make sure it's free of any debris. This float valve will rise up 
as the machine fills with water and it cuts off the suction. So when you notice a change in note of the motor, you need to switch off and empty the dirty water tank. And you also notice if the machine isn't picking up, it means that the suction has been blocked off. So you must empty at this stage. You've also got a washable pleated filter in the top that comes out. You can give that a rinse from time to time. Make sure it's dry as well before replacing it back into the machine. In fact, it's always useful once you've used the cleaner and rinsed everything out, leave the parts separated from the cleaner to dry before putting them back. So there's the filter, pops in the top like so. And then the float valve goes back into the tank. And then to fit the tank, you just put it on the bottom first and then you push it towards the top until it clicks firmly into position. On the back of the cleaner, we have the clean water tank. And again, it's removed using a silver button. And this is where we put the cleaning solution. Now, if you can't get hold of Nilfisk solution, you can use other floor washer solution in it. You can use VAT solution, Bissell solution, Karsha, whatever you've got. You could also use a regular hard floor cleaning solution, but it can't be anything that foams up too much. It is always best in my experience to use the proper stuff, but you can use other detergents in it. Just make sure they're low foaming and suitable for hard floors. On this one though, when using the Nilfisk detergent, you do have a measure guide to show you how much water and detergent to put in. And this capacity of the clean water tank is 0.55 liters and the dirty water tank is 0.52 liters. So approximately half a liter for the clean and dirty water tanks. So to fill it, you just need to remove the stopper at the top and fill this with hot water. Now you can fill up with water up to 60 degrees, which is pretty hot. A lot of floor washers say 40 or 30 degrees, but I like the fact that Nilflisk say you can go up to 60, which is more hotter really than the hand can stand. 50 degrees is hand hot water. It's this temperature you can safely leave your hands in without too much trouble, but when it gets above 50, 60, that's pretty hot. You wouldn't really want to keep your hands under a 60 degree tap for long. So I like the fact you can use hotter water in this than some. So you'd fill it with the clean water and detergent and you place it back in the machine, click it at the top and you're ready to go. We're ready to try the Nilfisk combi for the first time. So I filled up the clean water tank with hot water and detergent up to this line. And the detergent you get is only enough for one full tank. So you will need to buy more detergent. I suggest you buy some more detergent when you get the cleaner itself. But as I said, you can use other detergent. I've certainly got Tinko detergent left. I've got some Vax detergent. So I'm gonna use those up in this machine, but I'm sure Neil Flisk will recommend you use only their detergent in their machine. But as I said, if it's suitable for this type of floor washer, you should be able to get away with using other detergents. So it's filled up. Make sure you screw the cap back on properly, otherwise you're going to get it leaking everywhere. We'll pop it back in, click it into place, so we're ready to use the machine. Before you turn on, also make sure that the clean water tank is inserted properly and you've got the filter and float valve in place. I'm first going to try out the Nilfisk on this tiled Amtico floor. Now in the care instructions, Amtico state not to use steam cleaners on their hard floors, but I've been using this type of floor washer on my Amtico floors for several years and they've been fine. So I don't expect to get a dramatic result. This floor isn't filthy dirty. Although this morning, one of my dogs kindly left a deposit on the floor, which although has been picked up, has left a mark. So we'll see if the Nilfisk can cope with that.
although this floor didn't look very dirty before I started cleaning it, it does look a lot brighter than it did before. I have to admit that the uh, leftover dog waste did take a few passes before it was removed entirely, but it had been there a couple of hours, so it had dried in. I think even if I was to do that with a spray and a cloth, I would have had to rub it quite hard to remove it. But the Nilfisk did pick it up in the end, and it takes around, on average, five minutes for the floor to dry. The technique I used was to use the machine with the solution flowing. I locked the solution switch in the open position, so solution was flowing all the time. And then I went over the floor again with the solution stopped, just suction only, to remove any excess moisture from the floor. And that seems to work pretty well. So yes, I would say in under five minutes, your floor is dry enough to walk on. I don't expect the water to be filthy in here. I'm going over to clean my kitchen in a minute. The floor is dirtier in the kitchen, so we might see a more dramatic result, but we can have a look, just to have a look at the uh, container. This is stiff, I have to say, that is awkward. It's this switch doesn't seem to clear the tab at the top. Yeah, that's not good. There we go. Well, you can see the water it's picked up just about. So it's not filthy dirty, but it is dirty and it's also picked up some other debris. I didn't actually vacuum or sweep this floor. I just used the Nilfisk on it straight away. Let's have a look at the filter. And the filter, the mesh screen on the filter, you can see there's a little bit of debris on there. So if you want to avoid cleaning the filters too much, then you could always sweep or vacuum your floor before you use the Nilfisk. I'm in my kitchen now, so I'm going to try out the Nilfisk combi on my kitchen floor. Again, this is an Amtico floor, and I've got a typical scenario in my home. The floor doesn't look very dirty. There's some debris on it, small particles. There's some muddy footprints that have come in from the garden, but it's not hugely messy. This is a real life situation. When I use my Tinko floor washer, or when I used it before it broke, this is the sort of scenario I would have. I wouldn't bother sweeping because it's only small amounts of debris. I would just use the machine to wash and vacuum at the same time. And that's what I'm going to do with an Ilfis because a lot of people like this type of cleaner because they don't have to sweep the floor before using. But as I said, if you've got larger debris on the floor, if it's very messy, I personally would sweep or vacuum first. But this is a typical example in my home. So I'm just going to use the combi on the floor as it is. And again, I'll use it with the detergent flowing constantly over one area. Then I'll stop the detergent flow and then just go over that area with suction only to help dry it. And then I'll move on to another area. And then we'll see the results in the dirty water tank.
After cleaning the kitchen floor with the Nilfisk Combi, it certainly looks a lot cleaner and there is no visible debris either. It's picked up all the little bits and cleaned the surface of the floor. It does dry pretty quickly, I can confirm. Within five minutes, this floor was dry. In fact, parts of the floor were dry before I even finished cleaning the kitchen because the first part I cleaned was drying as I was cleaning the other part. So you can have no worries thinking you're gonna to have to be out of the kitchen for 20 minutes or so. Within five minutes, on average, you can walk on the floor again, which is pretty good. It is also fairly economical on the detergent. Now I have used up the whole tank full during the course of this video, but I have used this machine more just to get extra shots. But if I was to use this cleaner normally without filming it, I'm pretty sure this almost 500 milliliter tank or just over 500 milliliter tank would be enough to clean this kitchen, my hall, bathroom and ensuite on one tank. I'm pretty sure I can do that. With my Tinko, very small container, I had to fill that twice when cleaning my kitchen and then refill it when I wanted to clean the bathroom and ensuite. So yeah, it doesn't put a lot of detergent down, so it's fairly economical. Saying that, I've used up all the detergent supplied with the cleaner, so I'm, I'm going to have to source some more or, as I said earlier, use another detergent. But all in all, I'm pretty impressed. Let's have a look at the tank. This, this is annoying me. Um, it's the tank seems to catch on the, on the catch that uh, releases the tank it doesn't it doesn't clear i don't know if you can quite see here that there's a little black catch that seems to rub on the tank but well hopefully that will loosen up so for a kitchen floor that looked pretty clean you can see there is dirt in the container it's not a huge amount of dirty water, but then the floor didn't look that dirty, but it certainly feels a lot cleaner as I'm sitting on it here. So this is the sort of result I was expecting on a floor that didn't look filthy. These machines are ideal for maintaining a clean floor. They're not going to scrub. If you've got filthy floors, they're not going to get a really dirty floor spotlessly clean. But for day to day use, it will keep your floors clean because you're not mixing in dirty water. When using a mop, after you've dumped the mop back into the bucket, you're putting dirty water back in that water. So towards the end of your cleaning, you're basically spreading dirty water on the floor, which is why I always like this type of machine. I don't own a mop and bucket anymore. I've always used this type of floor washer for many years, and I think it's the best way to go. I prefer this type of machine to a steam cleaner where you're having to take off the microfiber pads and keep washing them in the washing machine. With these, you just have to tip out the dirty water down your sink or drain. So in that respect, it is better for me. And the fact that you don't, if there's not large visible debris, the fact that you can just quickly go over, wash and vacuum more or less at the same time, it does save time. So I know I'll get people commenting, oh, it's far easier to use a mop and bucket. Well, personally, I don't think it is. Not after using machines like this, as I said, for many, many years since they were first introduced. And you can see on here, there's a little bit of the debris on the, uh, the mesh part of the filter. So I could rinse that off and leave it to dry. Before I go, I'll just show you the maintenance you can do on the cleaner. So I'll empty the dirty water first, and then I'll show you how we can clean the brush roll with the cleaner stood in the storage tray. To help clean the roller and rinse the Nilfisk through, you add 50 milliliters of water to the cleaning area of the storage tray, like so. There's not much water there at all. Then you put the machine on the tray like so. Recline the handle and switch on for around 30 seconds. As my Tinko hard floor cleaner is now broken, I will be using this Nilfisk Combi as my day-to-day -day hard floor cleaner. So I'll update you in due course of how I got on with it. It's much as I expected. It's very similar to Abyssal Crosswave, but at the moment, at the time of making this video, you can get this from Amazon for under 80 pounds. 
So I paid a little bit more than 80. I think mine was 103 when I bought it, which was a good price. But recently I noticed it was just under 80. So for that price, definitely, if you want a floor washer, I would go for it. And as I said, it's a bit expensive to use Nilfisk detergent. Use your own detergent, but just don't use too much and make sure it's low foaming. And I'm sure it will clean just as well as it does with the regular Nilfisk stuff. But all in all, it's noisy, as most of these machines are. Um, it's a little bit inconvenient having a cord. I liked cordless because it was easy just to carry upstairs and clean my bathroom and then up another flight of stairs to clean my ensuite. So with this one, I'm gonna to have to plug it in, but it has got a long eight meter cable, so it will still reach the bathroom and ensuite floors. So it is a little bit inconvenient. But if you've got larger areas of floors to clean, I would go for a mains powered machine because then you're not worrying about it running out of battery. Plus this is a fairly large capacity, about half a litre for clean and dirty water. And as I said, it's fairly economical on detergent. So you will be able to clean larger areas of hard flooring without having to empty or refill all the time, which is what I had to do with my cordless Tinko. If you have any comments or questions about the Nilfisk Combi, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.